Here goes. Little tire spin. But then to 60 in 7.2 seconds. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. This new hybrid model looks pretty much the same on the exterior as the standard Corolla Cross, except for the fact that the badges are blacked out. So there's still this interesting snout up here that's above gloss black surrounding the grille. And on this range-topping XLE trim, you get projector LED headlights with LED DRLs and turn signals. Those are above some LED fog lights at the corners. And this one's painted in a Barcelona red metallic. That's with a contrasting black gloss roof. At the side, there are standard 17 inch wheels. These are the upgraded 18s wrapped in Goodyear all season tires, 225 section front and rear. There's black plastic cladding between the axles and around the wheel arches and gloss black for the door mirror caps. Chrome for the upper part of the window trim. And those crossbars are here as an option. Stepping back to look at the profile, the Corolla Cross Hybrid has a pretty traditional two-box SUV shape. A little softer in the design than the RAV4, but shows that family resemblance. Corolla Cross is spelled out in that chrome window trim at the C-pillar and within the taillights, which on this XLE trim are LEDs with LED turn signals. Those are above some black badges on the left and right-hand sides with more gloss black accenting the lower bumper piece. So the Corolla Cross Hybrid, it may not be the most sensual design of subcompact SUVs, but it's certainly not offensive. And if you want it in that acidic blast color that Omar Drives is reviewing over there, that is unique to the Cross Hybrid. What do you guys think? Is this better or worse looking than the RAV4 Hybrid? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up, and looking inside at this. You gotta leave when driving a crawl across. You like the poopy blast color? Poopy blast? I thought it was arc. I thought it was acidic blast. It's like when you shark. Get sharks. out of here. Get out of here, Omar. Looking inside at this black leatherette interior, which is here on the XFC trim, lesser trims get fabric seats with a choice of blue or gray inserts. Rear heated seats are here as an option. On the doors, it's hard plastics, high, middle, and low. Only the padded leatherette armrest breaks that up. You do get one touch up down windows and a cup holder. On this one, we've got a JBL sound system as an upgrade. Stepping in, behind my own seat at six feet tall. I've got enough knee room, not generous amounts. No map pocket on this side, just on the passenger side. The foot pockets are big enough to slide my feet under and that helps, but does not cure the thigh support problem. Headroom is great though. My head very easily clears the roof. That gets the thumbs up from me. In the middle, we've got air vents as standard, two USB-C ports. The drive shaft hump is not that big. So getting into the middle, is not hard. And here my head still clears the roof and there's enough space to squeeze in three full-size adults in a pinch. Wouldn't make that a daily thing. If you don't have a middle passenger, then an armrest comes down with two cup holders and leatherette padding. Let's check out the front next. Door closed noise. I mean, a little hollow, but really not bad for the price. Smart keyless entry is for the front two doors on this trim. The front seats are heated with the XSC trim. Power adjustments are for the driver. Manual adjustments are for the passenger. There's a Corolla Cross tread plate. The all weather floor mats are an option. Press this button for the power lift gate that's standard on this trim. Behind the second row of seating, we find 37.5 cubic feet of space. If you need more, you can reach in, press on those tabs and fold the seats down for 70 cubic feet of space. There's also a power close and lock button on the tailgate. The front doors look similar to the back, but they're upgraded to injection molding and contrast stitching up high. You get power adjusting, not power folding door mirrors. Stepping in. Drivers get a leather wrap steering wheel. Feels perfect in the hands. Reconfigurable digital gauge cluster here. Hard plastics up high in the dashboard. Some injection molding on the passenger side with more stitching. And there is a standard eight inch touchscreen infotainment system 
running the latest Toyota software. So it's pretty responsive and easy to use. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. Below that screen is a dual zone auto climate setup, one USB-C port there, wireless smartphone charging pad, leather wrapping for the gear selector, and lots of this gloss black trim in a spot that's easily going to get marked up. I don't like that decision. Under the leatherette top console is a narrow bit of storage with another USB-C port and DC outlet. This model here has the upgraded power operated moonroof. Visibility is pretty good. You do have a little blind spot at that back pillar and blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic is only standard on the mid and upper tier levels. This cabin is pretty spacious for this segment. I like the leatherette seats. I like the infotainment system. It seems on paper to be a good value, but we need to now take it for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. It is a silent startup apart from those cheery chimes. Our drive mode, selected right here, will be normal to start things off. And I'm going to hit this EV mode button where as long as there's charge left in the battery, we can operate at speeds up to 25 miles per hour in all electric mode. Pulling back on the gear selector that prompts a high resolution backup camera system with trajectory lines and an ultra wide view. This is always very helpful in addition to the rear cross traffic alerts for backing out of parking spaces when you've got people on either side of you. It's down into drive. And we'll kick things off as we usually do with a turning radius test. Wheel fully cranked. Gotta love the subcompact SUV size for the maneuverability, if nothing else. Turn signal sound. It is solid. And for the world famous horn test. Hmm. So very weak. The powertrain is shared with the new Toyota Prius. So we've got a two liter Atkinson cycle four cylinder paired with two electric motor generators and a lithium ion battery that is routed through an eCVT transmission to all four tires. The Corolla Cross Hybrid has all wheel drive as standard. And the output is 196 horsepower and 215 pound feet of torque. It's plenty for getting up to speed, that's for sure. And this vehicle returns fuel economy estimates of 45 in the city, 38 on the highway, and 42 combined, which would be just good for a conventional hybrid, but they're excellent for a small SUV. Joining up with the highway, moving over into the sport transmission setting, and plopping my foot fully on the throttle, I'm greeted by the robust power, but also by the drone of that CVT and the dissatisfaction of never having completed your gear, changing to the next one because, of course, there are no gears. I do have these paddles on the back of the wheel, which they say will simulate some gear changes. but really only that of the downshift. It'll, it'll upshift for you, doesn't require you to pull the paddle. It's not a sporty vehicle though, is it? Go back to drive, cruise here in the normal drive configuration and listen for the cabin volume. Certainly the ambient volume is kinda high. The road and tire noise being the biggest factors, though there is some wind noise as well. And that's not unheard of for this price point, but it's going to mean that your commute may not be quite as relaxed as you might like. And if you have conversations with your passengers, your voice will just inherently raise up so that they can hear you. 
We do have nice features as standard, like adaptive cruise control with steering assist. And this is not intended to be a hands-free system. I just take my hands off for demonstration purposes. So you can see that it will trace the lanes, the lane markings, so it'll keep in the center of the lane. And on a longer trip, these tech features can reduce some of that driving fatigue. In terms of ride compliance, we've got a McPherson strut front suspension and a double wishbone setup in the back that will bump you a little bit over certain blemishes, but is on the whole very agreeable. And that's pretty much all you can ask for, for something in this segment to be prepared for bumps, but not scared of them. And as handling goes, There's some communication with the resistance through the wheel, but otherwise quite a bit of mystery there. It feels stable at speed, and in general just willing to do what you ask of it. The braking feel? Not a very good initial bite, and so you gotta get further into the pedal for the slowing to actually start, but when you're in the pedal, the feedback is just enough for you to smoothen your way up to a stoplight. And getting off the line at low speeds, you hear that gas engine kick on, but you don't feel it much from the driver's seat. If you were curious how quick the Corolla Cross Hybrid gets to 60, I think we can satisfy that curiosity with a real-world 0-60 to 60 test next. For that, I've got my race box set up here. We're in the sport drive mode and now sport transmission. A little water falling from the sky. Hopefully that doesn't influence the zero to 60 too much, but I am going to brake boost us off the line and see how we do. Here goes. Little tire spin. But then to 60 in 7.2 seconds. With now a lot of rain falling, that's really impressive given that Toyota's own estimate is 8 seconds to 60. That's that standard all-wheel drive system at work and the 16% more power that you get in the hybrid version compared to the regular version of the Corolla Crossa. It seems like the right variant of this vehicle at least, but we have to look at the price point and what is out there in terms of competitors. The starting figure for the entry-level S trim for the Corolla Cross Hybrid is about $29,000. If you want to step up to the SE, that's $30,000. And for the XSE, that's about $32,000. And this one is tested with pretty much every option is about $35,500. Vehicles you might consider include the Subaru Crosstrek Hybrid that is a little more expensive to start. It makes less power. The combined MPG is lower, but it does have an all-electric range. There's also the Kia Niro Hybrid that is a little less to start, and it does have more combined MPG, but the power is way down to this. Really, one of the most compelling alternatives to the Corolla Cross Hybrid is within Toyota's own portfolio, the RAV4 Hybrid that starts at $32,000, makes 219 horsepower, but still gets 40 combined MPG and has more cabin space in addition to a more rugged exterior. And really, if you have the extra money, you might want to gradu graduate to that RAV4 Hybrid. But if you don't, the Corolla Cross Hybrid is, yes, a functional piece of equipment. It's not invigorating to drive, except for the zero to 60 was pretty awesome, but it does check all the boxes with great fuel economy, good power, and inoffensive styling. And while I'm not going to reach a verdict because this is just a first drive, I'm curious which you guys would choose from the competitors I mentioned. Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoy this video, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and wait, wait. I'll see you again next time.